Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna be doing more practice with upper bounds, lower bounds, infimums, supremums, and ordered sets all together. Now this problem is exercise 1.1.14, which can be found in your free online real analysis textbook, and I'll leave a link in the description so you can check that out. This problem says, let S be defined as the union of two sets, A sub K, where K is a natural number, and the sets the set of b sub k's where k is a natural number ordered such that a sub k is less than b sub j for any k and j a sub k is less than a sub m whenever k is less than m and b sub k is greater than b sub m whenever k is less than m show that s is an ordered set so first i want to show you what this set looks like we have two separate sets joined together somehow here I have a set A, which I'll label that set A, and this set will be my B. Now, how do we have this ordered? So A sub K is less than A sub M whenever K is less than M. So for example, A1 is less than A2 because 1 is less than 2. A2 is less than A3 because 2 is less than 3, and so on. And this goes on for all natural numbers. With B, we have the exact opposite relationship between my elements. So B sub one is greater than B sub two because one is less than two. B sub two is greater than B sub three and so on. Last, we have that every element in B is greater than every element in A. And so if you think about it as the alligator eats the bigger number, I can point my inequality this way. <laughs> I know I'm, that's definitely not allowed. You should not do that. But this is just a visual representation of what's going on here. All of these numbers are bigger than all of these numbers here. So this looks weird. Maybe I can write this in a different way. Well, I noticed this can be written as a1 is less than a2 is less than a3 and so on and then over here we have b1 is greater than b2 is greater than b3 and so on and every element in b here is greater than every element in a here now this is really sloppy because what the heck happens here but this does make it pretty easy to see that this set is totally ordered. Now this is totally ordered because if I pick any two elements here, I know that one of them is gonna be greater than the other one based on which one's furthest to the right. The further you are to the right here, the larger you are in this total ordering. So why is this set totally ordered? Well, I'm gonna give a sloppy proof here. I don't wanna in this video, I'm not gonna give you every single word, but I think this proof is still pretty legit in my opinion. Sloppy, but fine. So if I pick two elements, I need to show that those two elements relate specifically in one way. Either they're equal or one is greater than the other element. Now, if I pick two elements, I'm either gonna pick two A sub I's or I'm gonna pick two B sub I's or I'm gonna pick an A sub I and a B sub I. So let's work out three cases here. Case one, I pick two A sub I's. Well, if I do that, then whichever subscript is larger is gonna be the larger element. And specifically, that specific inequality is gonna hold. They're not gonna be equal to each other unless the subscripts are the same. So that's good. What if I pick two elements in B? Well, then whichever element has the smaller subscript is gonna be the larger element. Unless the subscripts are the same, in which case they're the same element. And then the last case, case three, is if I pick an element in A and an element in B. Well, in that case, then the element of B is gonna be larger, always. And so A sub I is less than B sub J for whichever I and J you picked. So that's a brief explanation as to why this set is totally ordered. And then for the transitive property, if I pick 
three random elements here, then we can just sandwich this inequality chain to get that the element on the left is strictly less than the element on the right. And so that's just a manipulation of inequalities. And so this set here is totally ordered. So that's good. Now let's do part B. Let E be a subset of S. Well, we need to show that this set E is bounded. So that just means I need to find an upper bound and a lower bound. But no matter what, I'm going to be able to do that. So let's let E be an element in E. I claim that A1 is less than or equal to E, which is also less than or equal to B1. Why is that true? Well, that's because the largest element in the set is B1. There's no element that's larger than B1. And the smallest element in this totally ordered set is A1. And so here I have this long chain. And on the left side of the chain is A1. On the right side of this chain is B1. Now, this is not really a chain. I'm, I have this problem here. Don't forget that. But how can we show that this is true? Well, there are two possible cases. Case one, E is in B, which means that E is some b sub t where t is a natural number well this means that a1 is less than or equal to e because ai is less than or equal to b sub j uh, for all i and j and e is less than or equal to b1 because b sub t is less than or equal to b1 since 1 is less than or equal to t. And that's just how the rules were defined for my set b here. Okay, case 2 is that this element e is in fact in a. So that means e equals a sub s for some s that's a natural number. Well, then that means A1 is less than or equal to E, since A1 is less than or equal to A sub S, since 1 is less than or equal to S. And E is also less than or equal to B sub 1, since A sub I is less than or equal to B sub J for all I and J. So either way, if E is in A or E is in B, meaning that E is in the subset E. A1 is less than or equal to E is less than or equal to B1. And so here I have an upper bound, and here I have a lower bound, since E is just any arbitrary element in my subset E. So that means that my set E is bounded. Now part C says that we need to find a bounded subset of S which has no least upper bound. Now keep in mind that according to this visual representation of our set S here, we have an upper bound and a lower bound for every subset. And so we just need to find a subset of this set S here that has upper bounds, they all have upper bounds, but doesn't have a least upper bound. Well, we could pick any countably infinite subset of A, and that would work. In fact, we could just pick all of A, because all of A doesn't have a least upper bound, since... Yes, B1 is an upper bound to A, but so is B2. B2 is also an upper bound of A. And so is B3. And so is B4. And so all of these elements are upper bounds of A. Which one's the least upper bound? Well, that's not possible because if I were to find this least upper bound, then I would be able to contradict myself somehow by, further, by going further down this chain. And so that's my answer to part C. So specifically, this subset right here has upper bounds. A has plenty of upper bounds, lots of them, 
every single element in B is an upper bound to A, but there's no least upper bound because B doesn't have a least element. Anyways, thanks everyone, and I'll see you all in the next video.